Hello, and welcome to the first in my series on performing complex refactorings in simple steps. I'm Matthew Butt. I'm a software craftsman at Cojurance. And in this series, I'd like to share with you some of the techniques I use in ReSharper to compose simple automated refactoring steps to perform wider refactoring to my code and to move towards better software design. When I was a child, I used to like to play a game where you had to make your way around the room without ever touching the floor. You jump from the bed to a chair to a box and back onto the bed. But if your toe even scraped the floor, then the crocodiles would snap you up. I like to see refactoring in a similar way. I like to keep my tests green at all times. I don't like to get into a position where my tests are running red and I'm at a danger of being eaten by the crocodiles. And I think many of us are good at this when it comes to small refactorings. We can rename things. We can extract a method and do various other small refactorings inside a class. But when it comes to reshaping the design of our code, when it comes to the more architectural side of refactoring, then we often decide to do one of two things. Either we just pull the code apart at the seams, rip the innards out, and then try to put it back together again in a new shape. And this is a really high risk strategy. Or we don't bother. We decide it's too difficult, that it's not worth the effort. And our code gets more and more complicated because we're not overcoming the technical debt. And so in this series, I want to look at how the automated steps that many of our IDEs offer us can be put together safely to get us from one design to another. In this first episode, I would like to look at converting a method into a method object. Let's have a look at a piece of code. Here you can see something within a postage calculator namespace. I've got a class called calculator and it has a public method on it called calculate. And then I can see I've got one, two private methods on this, which are helping out. This isn't the worst code in the world, but it can certainly get a lot better. And I can already see quite a few code smells here that suggest to me ways that I can refactor this code. But before I get dug in and start on the refactoring, I need to make sure that I've got the confidence to do this. And for that, I need a good suite of tests. So I've written some tests and I can run them and see that they run green. I can also perform a little mutation testing to confirm that I've covered all the possible changes to my code. And now I'm in a state where I'm confident that the code is adequately characterized and I can start tackling some of the code smells. So the biggest thing I notice in this code is that I seem to have two private methods that are doing completely different things. This suggests to me that this class has more than one responsibility. I'm going to set this aside for a moment because I can see some other code smells in this method, postage in based currency. And I think these are going to lead me to a cleaner design. So the first thing I notice in this method is that it's got four parameters. And this immediately makes me smell the long parameter list code smell. This is already a warning sign and I should start thinking about things I can do about it. But when I look at the details of the parameters, I see something else, I see another smell. I've got weight, height, width, and depth. These are all measurements of something, they're all dimensions. It sounds like they belong together. And when I look in the body of the method, I can see that they're being reused several times. So here, I'm smelling data clumps. And a good refactoring, when we see data clumps, is to extract a class from them. So if I have a quick look at where this is used, I can see 
that it's using the calculate method and we're actually passing on the parameters from calculate straight into postage and base currency. So I have a choice. I can either extract a class for the parameters for postage and base currency, or I can extract a class for calculate. Now my calculate method is public. If other people are relying on it, then I cannot change the signature. But it's quite fortunate that here I've got a private method whose signature I can change quite happily. So that's what I'm going to do. And the first refactoring I'm going to do is extract class from parameters. And you can see that ReSharper prompts me for a name. It's suggesting postage in base currency params, which is a dreadful name. It really doesn't tell me what this is. So a naive idea might be to call this dimensions or measurements or something like that. That's a little bit better, but there's actually a much better domain concept that I can use here. We're talking about posting something. So this is a package. So I'm going to call the class I extract package. I'm going to declare it as top level. And I'm going to perform the refactoring. I run my tests to make sure I haven't broken anything. And then we can look at what ReSharper has done for us. So we have a package class. We have four private fields, which are initialized in the constructor. And then ReSharper has created public properties, one for each of these fields. Now, properties are a smell. They tell us that we're failing to encapsulate our code. And we want to do something about this, but that's okay because one of the things to recognize about compound refactorings is that things may get worse before they get better. So we will accept this, but let it tell us where we can go next. Down into the calculator, I can see that I am creating a new package to pass into the postage and base currency method, and that the postage and base currency method accepts this. and that it refers to all the properties on this package. And as I suspected, I'm smelling another smell here. What we've got now is feature envy because postage in base currency cares a huge amount about the state of package, but it doesn't actually know anything about the calculator at all. So when we see feature envy, one thing we can do is move the behavior onto the envied class. So I'm going to use move instance method. And you can see that ReSharper is suggesting that I move this onto package, which is exactly what I want. And I'm going to set my access rights to public. I now get a little prompt. It's telling me that access rights for member will be extended. If I click on that, I can see that it's highlighted postage and base currency. It's telling me it's going to make that public. That's what I've just told it to do. So I'm quite happy to go ahead with this. I run my tests, everything's green. And I have a look at the state of my code now. So the package still has these fields, constructor properties, but now postage and base currency has moved onto it. And you can see that I'm accessing the properties directly. These are now self-encapsulated, to use Martin Fowler's language. And if I go down to calculator, I can see that postage and base currency no longer exists here. And instead, I'm calling it on my package class. Fantastic. I'm getting there. I've removed one of the responsibilities of my calculator, which is a fantastic result. And I have created a new domain concept, the package, which is encapsulating the behavior of calculating the base postage. So now I can do a little bit of tidying up. I can see that ReSharper has put green squigglies all over my code, and it's always worth checking out what these are referring to. So it's suggesting that I make my fields read only. I like this suggestion. It means that my package becomes immutable. 
and that works nicely. I then notice that I've got lots of squigglies around these properties. It's suggesting I can make the property private. Now there's a time and a place for private properties, but I don't think this is it. It's telling me I can convert to an auto property, but an auto property is just syntactic sugar for an ordinary property with a backing field. And I'm a bit iffy about having a property at all. And the final suggestion is to change my return to an expression body. Again, a nice piece of syntactic sugar, but not what I want. What I want to do is inline this. I don't need a property anymore at all. I'm quite happy to use the field. And having inlined this, I'm going to inline all the other properties. So if I now look at the implementation of postage in base currency, I can see that it's just looking at the fields. It's properly encapsulated now. So having nicely encapsulated this behavior, the last thing I want to do is move package into its own file. This way I can keep my file structure nice and simple. And I can see now how calculator is also much simpler. And that's the end of this first refactoring. I've extracted a method object from a method by first creating a class from its parameters and then moving the method onto that class, encapsulating all the data into the new class. So now if we look at our implementation, we can see that there are all sorts of other smells. But tackling those is a matter for another time. Join me then.